The Web3 space has been heating up lately, and so we're going to dive into the hottest news that you may have missed this week. Starting things off, the first thing we got to talk about is going to be the Bitcoin ETF approval. There's a lot of people now holding Bitcoin through traditional means, right, through BlackRock and other institutions like that. However, when we're looking at price of what's going on with Bitcoin, not a lot has really changed, right? There's a lot of volume, especially when there's a lot of news happening. The Bitcoin ETF just got approved, and then from there, it kind of just dropped off a little bit and has been steady so far. The way I think of it is there is infrastructure where regular people, everyday people who have 401k or whatever the case is, they can buy Bitcoin without actually owning any Bitcoin by buying these shares in the ETF. But there just hasn't been enough volume or money coming in to increase the price of Bitcoin, right? However, because of this infrastructure, when things start heating up again, and maybe when the market overall starts heating up, more and more people will buy Bitcoin. And also the fees, basically these companies that do these institutional grade ETFs, they're collecting fees for people buying it and holding it and there's like annual fees and things like that depending on which ETF you're talking about so you know as long as these companies are making money from people buying their ETF they're gonna market it and they're gonna push Bitcoin as far as they can and also if Bitcoin works out and this ETF works out it opens the doors to tokenizing other type of securities so this might open a whole new financial vehicle to offer new investment vehicles to their clients so this is actually very bullish for the crypto scene as well because the more regular people buy Bitcoin the more DGENs, you know, their assets and their coins go up, they sell them and then they're going to buy more DGEN things like NFTs and altcoins, meme coins, things like that. So it actually makes the ecosystem more vibrant as more volume comes in the space. Now, diving into what's going on in Web3, first thing we got to talk about is going to be Azuki. Azuki over the past week or two has been coming in hot with a lot of new news. They recently dropped this, I wouldn't call it a anime, but it's kind of like a short video, a two minute video that's a visual novel almost where they're taking stills of anime and then telling a story with voice acting and things like that. Personally, for me, the story is pretty good. The art is also pretty good as well. Um, and I could definitely see this being some kind of animated short, whether it's like a 15 minute, 10 minute, even five minute short. And I believe people would actually enjoy that. It's very uh, reminiscent of, you know, if you ever seen like League of Legends, if you go on YouTube, they have a lot of cinematic trailers where they're telling short stories for some of their heroes. And, you know, they have so many different heroes, they can't tell everyone's story. But so the point of these shorts is just to tell a fraction of the story and hopefully the audience can piece the world together, right? I think that's how probably Azuki is looking at it because I'm guessing they don't want to do a full on, you know, 12 episode uh, anime series. They probably want to test out which characters are going to work. What do people like? What's actually going to make money? Because the business of anime, there's so much more to it than actually making anime. You have to think about the characters in the story. Can they sell figurines? Can they be made into a video game if you did licensing, right? So there's all these questions that Azuki needs to answer. And to answer those questions, they have to test in these a low commitment ways, which is why they're doing these short animations, in my opinion. And for those short animations, they are going to be hiring this director called Goro Taniguchi. If I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, I apologize. But basically, this person has directed a lot of bigger anime projects like Code Geass, One Piece Red, also Bloody Escape. You know, definitely someone who's a veteran in the scene to do these Azuki anthology series. And anthology series, all that really means is short series where they're testing out different ideas. The way I think of it, if you've ever seen Star Wars Visions, basically it's kind of like a series of short animations where they're taking the Star Wars theme, but they made it anime and they're testing out different ideas to see what's working, right? And I'm guessing if I was the IP owner of Star Wars, I'd be thinking like, are any of these hitting? Are any of these, can they be its own spin-off series that we can sell to Netflix or Disney Plus or whatever, right? So I'm thinking Azuki's probably doing the same thing because it's a very traditional Web2 way of thinking. But of course, Azuki is not a Web2 brand, but you have to go into Web2, right? More Azuki news. I mean, Azuki is just coming in nonstop. They also launched a collaboration with Beans and Line Friends, right? Basically, they had this brown winter wonderland. They also have another animation trade where they're basically selling these cups, keychains, and figurines, right? This one, I believe, is like 200 bucks for the figurine itself. And so far, from my guessing, it's been a huge success. Everyone who is a fan of Zuki is like kind of buying them. They're cleaning out the shelves in the store in Korea. So it's a really strong narrative, right? And personally, I think Beans can actually be a large brand, just like how, you know, Hello Kitty kind of is or what these line sticker characters, line friends kind of are. So there's definitely a lot of potential there and opens up the door for other Web3 brands as well. Well, right you know if you're an nft project founder you're doing something cute this is opening the doors right because if line wants to collaborate with beans then maybe an 
another messenger app might want to collaborate with you or another web two brand might want to collab with you right you don't have to be azuki you can do it your own way and if you know they're real deal directors directing an azuki short series if you're a you know anime project then this also opens the doors so all this is actually really great for the web3 space the more innovation there is the more barriers that are broken the more web3 combines with web2 the more opportunity there is for all of us and lastly azuki also launched their collector status version 1.0 long story short they want to have these badges where they're going to be rewarding people for holding depending on duration of time which trait you have and what you're doing to actively grow the community right so this is actually good in that it incentivizes people to want to hold and they actually have some kind of incentive to participate somehow in the community to grow the entire ecosystem other nft projects like our community as well which is a community i'm also part of right which also has their own nft they also have badges as well so you know, this whole idea of like having an NFT as a gateway membership and then having badges to incentivize people to actually want to participate in your community. I think that's going to be something that will be very common and every NFT project will eventually kind of have to have it because how can you reward your community? How can you get people to actively promote your brand essentially, right? And if there's a very easy way to do it, that's on chain and you can reward people, then that's great. So for Azuki, for example, a lot of what the news is about is there is a token called Weep3 Foundation foundation so there's not much information about it but there's associations with the Azuki team on this and they're going to be dropping a token so the speculation is that if you hold Azuki then you're going to get a token airdrop now this is not the main Azuki token they never said it was I think it's just going to be like a separate protocol that Azuki is helping with the marketing in and in return they're getting their community tokens right so yeah so they're probably going to be like hey if you have an Azuki you've been holding for a long time and you have all these badges you're going to get more tokens that's probably what it is and that's what people speculate so that's it on Azuki now we're going to move outside from Azuki and we're going to talk about Animoca's new project called AnyChess. It's a chess game, right? So it's the same people that own chess.com, which is one of the largest websites where people can play chess. It's very basic, but dude, this thing like makes a lot of money. Basically, they're doing like chess filled with like magic, just like puzzles and stuff like that. So like an upgraded version of chess that's like on the blockchain, right? So is this going to have a token? There's no official announcement of this having a token, but from what people speculate and what I hear, they probably will will have a token so that's I mean it's Animoca right so they always do tokens so this is another project that people are kind of looking out for I mean it's like web 3 but chess so it's like a very easy formula because people love chess right speaking of tokens let's talk about meme land real quick because they got a couple of new updates captains right now is actually doing pretty well so overall people are pretty happy with meme land with the token and the nfts now what, what are some updates with meme land there's a couple key things that meme land's having right farming is about to end meaning farming was basically like you tweet and you promote meme land they give you tokens right so that's going to end and stake land is launching so stake land what is it there's not a lot of details but essentially what i'm guessing or what people say is you're going to stake your meme tokens and then you're going to get eth right how does that work where does the money come from it's unclear meme land is going to be at places like nft paris complex con nft nyc and all these different places so if you're in nfts i guess this year 2024 is the time to go to nft events you know you'll see me there as well and for the nft side they are going to be doing the captain's art because a lot of people didn't say it was that great they didn't really do the traits yet either and they're rewriting the lore how good will it be hard to say right because meme line is really like more of a social fi token so i don't know if their strength is ip but if they can hire the right people to do it then why not right and then they're also going to looking to integrate their nfts or something in some kind of game possibly and then so they want to start testing some merch collaborations right that's pretty much what's going on with me land i think a good case study of you know using nft as marketing for a token which everyone is kind of doing now so they kind of kick-started the the bull run in a sense right not necessarily a kickstart but they were one of the first people to do nft to token now everybody's doing it right next project we're about crypto undeads There's a lot of hype behind this one there's not much information about it from um, what i can see they went to a lot of the influential alpha groups and stuff and basically pre-sold the nfts for about 2.5 soul and the public whitelist was going to be three soul right and by pre-selling to all these communities everybody talked about it then the hype became real nobody really knows what the art for the pvp looks like but you know the floor price shot from 2.5 three soul all the way to like 15 soul at the time of this recording so it's definitely hype a lot of it is like all hype right and so you got to be careful if you go into to these type of projects because you, you never know when the hype will fail. Now, the next thing we're gonna talk about is gonna be Blast, right? So Blast was pretty hot where people were throwing in like tens of millions. I think it's over like 100 million of ETH committed to this already, right? So people basically just throw their money into a wallet and then you like earn rewards. So what's the update with Blast? Well, they got a bunch of money and it's a way for people to earn like uh, APY on their ETH that they send and then Blast tokens and stuff like that. Basically what they're gonna do is they're gonna have grants, right? So they're gonna give away grants to different developer teams. Now, what do you do with this grant? Well, you can apply or maybe you know someone on the team and then you ask them like, 
hey, can I get some free money? And they'll say, sure, here's some tokens, build something. The reason why they want to do this is because if you have a layer one or layer two and nobody uses your chain, it's a ghost chain. So you have to incentivize builders to come on and no builder is going to come on for free because they can build on ETH, on Sol or whatever, where there's actually more volume. What ends up happening is that so like Blast, for example, has to give out grants. Like let's say they give you like 200K, 500K or a million dollars, depending on what you're doing. And then you get your whole team to build on their project. And then their sell is like, hey, if you build on our project, you know, we have like 100,000 people that gave us money. So we're going to help you do marketing. So you have more users for whatever product it is that you're making. So they're going to have, you know, judges for different teams that build different things on Blast, right? And then they're also going to have like one on one office hours. So they're going to help you out, build your project. And the categories that we have is a lot of different things like decentralized exchanges, lending protocols, NFT gaming, GambleFi, SocialFi, so a bunch of different stuff, pretty much everything, right? So if you got an idea and you kind of fit in this category, well, you can apply for a grant to see if you can get some free money. So just to be clear, you know, pretty much everyone is in a war essentially, right? Whether you're a new chain coming up, you're Avalanche, you're IMX, everybody's giving grants right now because everybody wants to win this game. Even Memeland has to create a fund so that people actually build on their platform with their token, right? So this is why tokens are actually very difficult because you have to create these funds, you got to convince teams to build on your platform, and then you got to get users for those people who are building or else your chain is going to die. But that's just the nature of how crypto goes. But hopefully that gives you some more insight on how these things work. Anyways, that's everything we got to cover for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a like, subscribe, and make sure to follow me on Twitter at Patrick Dang, and I will see you in the next one.